G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. The NRL 2022 season is fast approaching and this is the video that you have all been waiting for. March 1st, we're getting into the month of the NRL season and today I'm going to be speaking about the entire 16 team, where they're going to be finishing for the season. I'm going to be getting into my grand final, my Dally M pick. I haven't got a full Dally M team of the year, that could be a separate video, but this is my 2022 ladder predictions. Let's get straight into it. Starting off in 16th place, the team with the wooden spoon. Last year, it was the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. They seem to have recruited well. I seem to see two teams get thrown around quite a bit lately, and one of those teams I do have for the spoon. I believe last year's pick for me was the West Tigers, and I don't think it will be the West Tigers in 2022. I'm going to tip the North Queensland Cowboys. I think that they spent so much money on Valentine Home that... They, are, they have got some young guns coming through in Highland Lukey, Griffin, Namai, but at the same time, they're just not achieving those results, and I think it's going to lead to some frustration in the club, and I, I think that Todd Payton it was a great coach at the Warriors. I don't know how he fits at the Cowboy. He limits Jason Talmalolo, who's a wrecking ball, uh, game time, and for that reason, I don't think they'll be winning many games. I'm going to take the North Queensland Cowboy as my 2022 pick for the Wooden Spoon. Well, they're not far off the spoon, but they just avoided it, in my opinion. I'm going with the West Tigers. They've got Oliver Gildart and Jackson Hastings joining the club in 2022, as well as Tyrone Peachy coming for the uh, season. And look, they have recruited okay. Um, I just don't know about the coaching of Michael Maguire. There are a lot of rumours, and you, you don't know the truth about it. You've seen some players leave during his time as well and step down away from the club. Now, the club also has five captains announced for the 2022 season. I think the Panthers had about two or three, but I don't think we've seen five in quite a long time. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the last time that five captains were actually elected, I believe they they made the top eight and went on to play in a grand final. I, I double-check that, but I'm going to take the West Tigers as my pick for 15th spot. 14th is a team that I really like a lot. I have a lot of respect for this team. They've got some really great players, but I just saw them out of form and they go into a very similar uh, lineup this year. And I think that their recruitment has been okay, um, but I feel like there could have been some better choices. They have bought Adam Elliott. They have also bought Jamal Fogarty. And I'm talking about the Canberra Raiders. This is a team that was in the grand final just a few years ago. Really, really successful in recent years until missing the top eight last year. But I think they're going to have a really, really poor season. I think they looked great in the trials. And you can say, uh, oh, they're going to make the top eight. But I don't genuinely think that the Canberra Raiders can make the top eight. They've definitely got the roster too. If they have all guns firing, unfortunately, I don't think all guns will be firing in 2022 for this club. And I'm going to take the Raiders to finish in 14th. Next up, moving into 13th, is a team that have some young guns coming through and they've got a very experienced member of their coaching staff which really i'm i think i'm going to regret this one this is a team that i had in my top four last year and they've got a very similar roster to that they've also got the welcoming home of dane gagai and let's just say it andrew john so it is the newcastle knights i think that the knights are going to digress one of my certainties for the year and I know Andrew Johns is at the helm of the defensive attacking coach in the halves, and he'll be training up Adam Clune. Uh, and Adam Clune did look very good in the trials, don't get me wrong, in the 16 all draw. But I just don't think Newcastle have enough what it takes to make the top eight against some of the other teams that have been building. And unfortunately, I just think that they will be in that final spot in the ball. Next up is a team that I did have around 9th, 10th, but the more I think about it, I just don't like the roster as much as I'd like to. I think that this guy is a good coach and I think that they would have potentially made the top eight last season if some things went their way. 
but unfortunately a barbecue stopped everything and I'm talking about the St. George Illawarra Dragons. I'm going to take the Dragons to finish in 12th position. I love what their rookie Tyrell Sloan's producing. Um, they looked pretty good in the trial 26 to 22 over the Parramatta Reel. They've bought some players who have been around for a long time, quite experienced. It seems like this is a team, if they're going to play finals footy, that they can go deep into it due to that experience. And I know a lot of people are tipping Dragons around that 7th, 8th. But for me, I, I just don't see it. I've got some teams above them. And so I'm going to put the Dragons in 12th. Next up in 11th. Now, this is a very young team. You've got uh, Preston Campbell's son, Jaden, coming through. You've got the likes of David Fafida, Tino Fasua Ma'ali, some great players. But at the same time, I am a little bit worried about the young team. Toby Sexton, a great little backup halfback as well. I'm um, looking forward to seeing more of him. But I'm going to go the Gold Coast Titans. The Gold Coast Titans, I tipped them for the top eight last year. They made the top eight. But I just think this year, they've lost Jamal Fogarty. Um, they still did look good in that trial match. But I, I feel like there is another Queensland team above them. And I'll be speaking about them soon. And I, I don't think there'll be more than one Queensland team making the top eight. So I think the Titans around that 9th to 11th is fairly fair. Um, I know RXYSV2 has told me that he thinks the Titans will win the comp this year, so that would be absolutely outrageous. They've still got a fantastic side. They're still going to win some game, but I just think there's some teams above them. One of those teams above them, I do not have this team making the top eight, but I do have them as improvers. They have a fantastic roster coming into 2022 and an even better roster coming into 2023. Matt Dufty, uh, Matt Burton... Paul Vaughan, Tevita Pangai Jr. Tevita looked really off in that trial match the other day after a, a great end of the season with the Panthers in 2021. So I, I can't wait to see more of him. But I'm going to go to the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. They've recruited well. I don't know about Trent Barrett as a coach. I just, under these, the, the players have to perform. It's not going to come down to the coaching, in my opinion. These players must be fired up with the roster that they have. I personally don't think that this Bulldogs team will make the eight, but I'm not going to stand here and say that my biggest bold prediction is that the Doggy won't make the eight, because I think it is definitely plausible. I think that they definitely have recruited really, really well. They've got to be over the cap for sure, but um, really nice team. They've got some young guns coming through. I saw Bailey Bayondu Odu, who um, has also been featured in the Traders cards as one of the club heroes for the season. You've got Josh Jackson, um, there's some great, great names and, and, and some great clubmen in that side. And I think they'll have a much better year than getting the spoon. But I feel like they can just avoid that bottom four. So I'm going to safely put them in 10th position. Now, next up is a team that originally I actually had bottom two. I had this team in 15th, 16th, but I've moved them into 9th. I think that they'll just miss out on final. And the thing about recruitment is that you can't expect it all to work in the first year. You want it to, but you can't. And that's why I think that the Warriors will have a good season. Now, the Warriors, they probably won't be playing many games in New Zealand just due to the whole situation that's been happening for years. But you think about Adam Fenua Blake, you think about Ben Murdoch, Marcella, Ewan Aitken, Marcelo Montoya, Josh Curran, players who had a decent season. But at the same time, they're still getting time under the belt. They've had another preseason, and they've probably had a great preseason as well based on their win against the Storm in the trial. And then you've got the likes of Sean Johnson coming back to New Zealand. Ash Taylor, in my opinion, probably won't be a starting player in this side, but he will get some game time nonetheless. You've got the young gun, Reese Walsh, definitely probably playing to stay at the club at a contract if he wants to stay. So I think he's in for a, another huge year. But I actually think the Warriors are a real shot of making the top eight this year. And I can't believe I'm saying it considering a month ago I probably, or longer, Probably had this team bottom two, but I, I just think above some of these teams, the Bulldogs, uh, the Knights, the Raiders that have made the top eight for years to come, that the Warriors after three or four years can potentially make the top eight. So I'm going to put them outside of the top eight in ninth position, but I'm very high on the New Zealand Warriors in 2022. Get into my top eight. Now, starting in eighth position is a team that I, again, really like getting behind. They were in last year's NRL Grand Final, but I just think they've lost a little bit of experience. They've still got some great players. This man, Cody Walker, lost this one in Adam Reynolds. They have recruited uh, Sylvia Havili, uh, Dynamis Louie, 
um, Anthony Milford, part of the club. So look, there are some, and, and it is Jason Dimitri's first uh, coaching time with the Rabbitohs. Wayne Bennett has now left the club. And I think they'll digress. I think that they will make the top eight, but I think that they will really struggle. And I think we're going to see that, um, just how much they're going to miss Adam Reynolds. But they've still got Cody Walker, still got Latrell Mitchell, try-scoring machine Alex Johnson. So there still is a lot to like about the Rabbitohs, but I don't think the Rabbitohs are a threat in 2022, if you know what I mean. But I'm going to take the Rabbits to finish in eighth. This is a really interesting pick for mine, but this is my... Small dark horse. I've got another one that you'll be hearing about soon for the competition, and it is the Brisbane Broncos. They've got Adam Reynolds. Adam Reynolds now heads to the Brisbane Broncos. He's uh, the captain of this side. So, look, I think they're in for a good year. You've got Kurt Capewell coming, Jordan Pereira, if they can get him firing at another club. Uh, and then you've got the likes of Payne Haas and Patrick Carrigan having some more game time under his belt. You've got Herbie Farmworth, who's probably going to head to the Dolphins after this. But I think that the Broncos are going to have a really successful season and at least play finals footy under Kevin Walters. And I think fans at Red Hill will have something to cheer about when they find out that the Broncos will be playing finals in the newspapers. This is my dark horse. And this team can win the competition. The only thing that worries me is the first year coach situation. <laughs> situation again. The Cronulla Sharks. I am so, so high on the Cronulla Sharks. Now, the first signing, Nico Hines. So many try assists in 2022, while Ryan Pappenhausen spent that time on the sideline. You take that into account and see that happening in the halves with Braden Trindle, who looks quite comfortable and, and nice. And it's going to be their team. It's not Chad Townsend and Sean Johnson's team anymore. It's Nico Hines. And then you've got the leadership of Dale Finucane, the teammate of Nico Hines coming to this side. You've got try-scoring machines in Sione Katoa, Ronaldo Mulatalo, Matt Ikevalu. There's just some really great options there, and I love this Sharks lineup. You've got Britton Nakora, who's getting better and better as his seasons go on. And even Toby Rudolph, the Newtown Jets player, who's just getting great to watch, loves a bit of comedy. And I love this Sharks team. I almost want to, and it's a crazy thought to do it, considering... They're a top eight team that was making up the numbers, which I don't think they'll be next season. I think they will, or this season, I think they'll be successful. But I want to put this team top four. I really, really do. I want to say that the Cronulla Sharks can make the top four with the roster they've got. And then you've got Cameron McInnes, who returns from injury. It's probably going to take a while for him to adjust. But I think at the maybe round six, seven, you're going to start seeing just how good this player is and just how form Cam McInnes is. And he's going to be at... Uh, a back in his hooker position, I believe. Uh, probably could get some game time at lock as well, but I feel like Dale Finucane probably locks down that lock spot. So it'll be really interesting to see how he comes in the side. You've got Blake Braley, who's really just maturing as the seasons go on. So I'm so high on the Cronulla Sharks this season. I'm going to put them in sixth. Well, fifth position, this is an absolute shock, and I, I'm i going to regret this because I know that they're going to fucking finish top two. It's going to happen bound to happen, especially with their coach, Craig Bellamy, but I'm going to take the Melbourne Storm. Now, they've recruited really, really well with Nick Meaney, Xavier Coates, and they've got some great young guns coming through, Jack Howarth, Bronson Garlic, but at the same time, they've lost Josh Adokar, they've lo they're, they're going to lose, this is the, the final season for the Bromwich brothers as well, as well as Felice Cafusi, and I'm just quite worried about this side. Uh, Brandon Smith will shift to the lock position. Harry Grant probably plays in the nine as Dale Finucane has left the club immediately, pretty much. So the Storm still have such a good squad and such a good roster, but I think that there are some teams that can win more games in the Storm this year. In saying that, and you'll see why later, I think that the Storm can still go deep into the finals. So you'll be seeing that soon. But I'm going to take the Melbourne Storm. I haven't tipped them outside the top four ever and uh, it feels crazy to do so but it feels like this is the year that if something bad's going to happen it's going to happen you still got Pappenhausen you still got Brandon Smith you still got Jerome Hughes Cameron Munster Cameron Munster is uh I think Wendell Saylor tipped him for the Dally M you'll see my Dally M tip soon but Melbourne Storm in fifth hopefully uh no injuries this season after a dismal season with injury but still a successful season Trent Robinson one of the best coaches around, and I'm going with the Sydney Roosters. The Sydney Roosters, 
They've got Connor Watson. They've come uh, coming back to the club. They've got Kevin Naguama. They're going to have Luke Keary and Sam Walker in the halves. Two fantastic players when he comes back. James Tedesco, I think he's going to have a really big season. I think the last two years have been fairly quiet for him. 2018, 2019, absolutely outstanding player. And he still was great in those quiet seasons. But I think this is a kind of comeback year for James Tedesco. And I think this Roosters side will finish the top four. That's probably one of my guarantees for the year. I think they're a very scary side. A lot of people tipping the Roosters to win the comp. And I, I'm interested to see the Roosters next year. They're going to have Brandon Smith in their side as well. And I feel like for the Roosters this year, this will be Jared Weir Hargrave's probably final stint as a Rooster or, or as an NRL player. I feel like there are a few players that will call retirement. And I think one of them will be Jared Weir Hargrave. So I think he's getting on. He's still playing real good. Um, and I think if the Roosters do win the Premiership, he'll probably depart the club. So Sydney Roosters... Get ready for a big season. You know you're going to have a big season. Everyone knows it. You're a scary team. You'll want revenge for last year and the Roosters to finish in fourth. In third is a team that started off last season in 16th position and ended up making the top four. And I think they rise by one spot, the Manly Seagulls. Now, if this team stays fully fit, this team's going to be very, very hard to stop. We've seen just how good their attack is, but they have to work on their defense. If they are to make a prelim or a grand final, this team has to work on defense. And I think by winning games and, and getting themselves in the top four, they prime and ready for a, a big finals uh, season. Tom Trevojevic, Jason Saab, Ruben Garrick, Kieran Foran, DCE, Tanella Paseca. There are just so many great names in this side. Um, Marnice Fainu potentially could return to the club. We're waiting to see some announcements involving that. And then Martin Tapao, I feel like he may head to the Dolphins or another club next season. So he'll probably want a big season under the Manly Seagulls side. He may not start. He may um, come off the bench. And then you've got Dylan Walker, who was absolutely brilliant for them last year. We saw just how many points they were able to score, just how dominating this side was. And I think they'll be very, very similar, if not the same. If anyone has the Manly Seagulls outside of their top eight, then you are fucking crazy because this is one of the scariest teams that I've seen in a while. And I think the Manly Seagull will be extremely hard to stop and in for a big 2022. I only want to put this team around fifth and sixth because I feel like I'll get it right at the end of the year. But I'm not going to because Reid Marnie is leaving the club. Uh, we've got some players re-signed, but some players are leaving the club. Isaiah Papalihi heading to the West Tigers. Oregon Kafusi, the young gun we've had for a few years, heading to the Sharks. We had that heartbreak against the Penrith Panthers in the finals last year. And I think we can do one better. I really, really do. So you know what? I think the Parramatta Eel, as a regular season team, can be so close to that minor premiership and miss out by about one to two game. I'm going to take the Parramatta Eels to finish in second position this year. I really do think that this roster we have is so big. So depth as well. There's some young guns who can come in, win some games, and, and fill those spots. But I think Mitchell Moses is, is really, really going to step up. And I think the leadership of Junior Paulo with Clint Gutherson is a really nice combination. The co-captaincy players who are quite experienced now in the NRL. But as I said, I want to put this team fifth, sixth, because I feel like I want to get it right at the end of the year. But I just, I can't. I think that if Parramatta win enough games at Bank West, then they can still make the top four. And I think if they do win enough games and they get that kind of home advantage in the finals as well, it's just a huge factor. So I don't put Parramatta outside of the top four and I put them winning more games than the Roosters and Seagulls, but do I have them in the grand final? You'll have to wait and see that part. Last year, I tipped them in a prelim, um, but just fell short against the Penrith Panthers. But I know everyone's going to call me biased, but I'm just genuinely thinking aloud how good this Parramatta side has been for years, how they've been in the top four, how they've been in sixth position but still made it so close and beaten some quality sides in the Melbourne Storm, um, beaten the Roosters last year, but obviously they weren't full strength but still had some big-name players in their side. So Parramatta, I'm going to take you in second. Don't let me down this season. I mean, in first position is the Premiers, the Penrith Panthers. Can they go back-to-back? Nathan Cleary is still a fantastic player. They lose Matt Burton. They lose their new recruit, Tavita Pangai Jr. 
Um, there's just, there's still a lot to like about the Penrith Panthers. And there's still all the young guns coming through as well. There was some, uh, Kurt Fall was great in the trial for them the other day. He could potentially come into the side um, if Origin, come, uh, Origin jersey comes around for Nathan Cleary, which I have no doubt that it will. Brian Toto, he's had two fantastic seasons. He's just going to get absolutely better and better to watch. So uh, Penrith Panthers, I think that they're another team that will be really dominant in 2022. I think they're like kind of the new storm. Um at the moment, we'll wait and see how they go for this season. It's going to be very hard for teams to go back-to-back. -back. We saw it with the Sydney Roosters. Can they go back-to-back? -back? You'll have to wait and see in a minute. But I do think that the Penrith Panthers will finish with the minor premiership. All right, so let's get into the Dally M top three now. So I'm going to go with last year's Dally M medalist, Tom Travojevic, to finish in third position. I think that the Manly Seagulls will have a great season. But I think Tom can't take all the points. that You've got DCE, Jason Saab, Ruben Garrick. Even some of the forwards will step up and have some big game. So I'm going to take Tom Travojevic as third. Second, I'm going to take Nathan Cleary. I think Nathan Cleary is probably the red-hot favourite, arguably, to beat Tom Travojevic this season, especially with the Panthers. Being, we've seen how dominant they are. We've seen that they can win regular season games and potentially go back-to-back. -back. So I think Nathan Cleary is going to have plenty of points, and I almost have him tied with the other guy. But I mentioned earlier, my Dally M medalist for 2022 is James Tedesco. I think that the Roosters are going to have a fantastic season. I've put them in fourth position. And I think James Tedesco is going to be one of those players that's still going to be a representative player um, and show these young guns just how good he is and continue to earn um, Origin jersey, Australian jersey, Roosters jersey. And so I'm actually going to take James Tedesco as my pick for the Dally M. Uh, as for other picks, I'm actually going to go with the Melbourne Storm here for the top try scorer. Their new recruit, Xavier Coates. I think he's going to get plenty of ball. He's on the left wing, so I think it's a, a really nice pick there. And I mentioned the Panthers having a lot of young guns. I mentioned the name of, of Kurt Falls, and I'm going to chuck one in here, an interesting one. My pick for the Rookie of the Year is going to be a Ford, and I'm going to take Mark Geyer's son, Maverick Geyer. Seen a bit of him in the New South Wales Cup. I think he's got a lot of potential to come into this side, make a debut, and earn himself a spot on the bench. I think that there's still some great uh, starting uh, pack for the Penrith Panthers. But Maverick Geyer is my pick for the Rookie of the Year. Let's get into my final series. All right, so the NRL 2022 final series predictions by Entertain House. So, the finals games based on my games. Uh, the first game sees the Penrith Panthers up against the Sydney Roosters. Roosters have had a great season. They finished in fourth, the Panthers in first, and I'm going to take the Panthers to win that game and advance to a prelim spot. And the second game for the qualifying is the Parramatta Eel hosting the Manly Seagulls. And I'm going to take Manly to win that game. I love my Eels, and I've got them finishing second, uh, but I think Manly will be a little bit too good for Para in the finals. Now you've got the elimination game, and the first one sees the Melbourne Storm up against the South Sydney Rabbitohs, and I just think the Storm in the finals are a very different team, and so for that reason, the Rabbitohs go home, Rabbitohs out week one of 2022. The second game sees the Cronulla Sharks and the Brisbane Broncos, and I think the Broncos head home. I think the Sharks, I'm really high on them this season. I think they step up in the final and advance. So the Broncos, top eight for mine, but out in week one. The second game in week two sees the Roosters taking on the Melbourne Storm. And I think the Roosters and Storm both have some very, very experienced players, but I'm going to take the Sydney Roosters to win that game. So the Storm are eliminated. I did say that I think that they win their first game of final and go deep. But I feel like the Roosters just have a little bit more firepower um, against this side. Now, the next one is the Eels and the Sharks. And I'm going to take Parramatta here. I think that Parramatta can beat the Sharks. I think in the regular season, we may potentially get beaten by the Sharks. But I think come final, going to be a very different side and going to be very, very hungry. Now, going into the prelims, you've got four teams left, and those four teams are the same four teams that I have in my top four. Panthers, Eels, Manly, Roosters. You've got the Panthers playing the Eels. 
just like last season, and I'm going to take the Penrith Panthers to win that game. So the Penrith Panthers book a spot in the grand final, and the Manly Seagulls versus the Sydney Roosters. Who do I have playing the Panthers or the Roosters? They've, they're going to have a bounce back season. They're going to finish top four. Going to be absolutely fantastic to watch. Manly, their attack is good, but can they work on their defense? They have to if they're going to win a game like this. And I think they will. So my grand final for 2022 for the NRL is the Penrith Panthers versus the Manly Seagulls. Now, the funny thing is, is I predict this grand final as my two team. But I've actually done the maths now with the games and all signs, in my opinion, lead to a Panthers versus Manly Seagulls grand final. And I'm going to take Manly to win the Premiership. I think that Tom Trevojevic is just so good to watch. I think he's going to win his first Clive Churchill medal. I think that Manly can work on their defense. We've seen how good they're attacking. They'll still drop some silly games, but they'll learn from it. And that's why I think that fourth position, Manly Seagull, will take out the Premiership in 2022. That's going to be it for this video, guys. That is my 2022 ladder prediction. I hope you enjoyed this video. Panthers versus Manly. Book your tickets, fans, and Parramatta and the Pep and the uh, Parramatta Reels versus Ro and Roosters to have a fantastic season as well. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you.